Good morning and welcome to today's New York City Council hearing on zoning and franchises. At this time, we ask that you silence ele all electronic devices, and at no time is anyone supposed to uh, approach the dais. If you have any questions, please see one of the sergeant at arms. Chair, we're ready to begin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a meeting of the Subcommittee of Zoning and Franchises. I am Council Member Kevin Riley, Chair of the Subcommittee. I am joined by Council Member Shulman, Salam, Carr, Abreu, Narcisse, Holden, and remotely by Moya. Today we are scheduled to hold seven hearings. The first hearing concerns the first sidewall cafe application that the council will hear under the revised regulations and concerns, LU 124, which is an application by Wings and Seafood. The second hearing concerns the city map actions relating to the Bronx Metro North project which we heard earlier this month on July 9th, and consists of LUs 109 to 113. The third hearing concerns LUs 114 to 116 for a project known as 500 Kent Avenue. The fourth hearing concerns LUs 120 and 121 for a project known as 712 Myrtle Avenue. The fifth hearing concerns LUs 119 for a project known as 197 Berry Street. The sixth hearing concerns LUs 122 and 123 for a project known as Prince Point. And the seventh and last hearing concerns LUs 117 to 118 for a project known as 3033 Avenue V. This meeting is being held in a hybrid format. Members of the public who wish to testify must testify in person or via a Zoom. Members of the public wishing to testify remotely may register by visiting the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc.gov slash land use. To sign up, and for those of you here in person, please see one of the sergeant at arms to prepare and submit a speaker's card. Members of the public may also view a live stream bar broadcast of this meeting as the council's website. When you are called to testify before the subcommittee, if you are joining us remotely, you will remain muted until recognized by myself to speak. When you are recognized, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that your mic is on before you begin speaking. We will limit public testimony to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have a written testimony you would like the subcommittee, instead of appearing in person, please email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Written testimony may be submitted up to three days after the hearing is closed. Please indicate the LU number or the project name in the subject line of your email. We request that the witnesses joining us remotely remain in the meeting until excused by myself as council members may have questions. Lastly, for everyone attending today's meeting, this is a government proceeding and decorum must be observed at all times. Members of the public are asked not to speak during the meeting unless you are testifying. The witness table is reserved for people who are called to testify and no video recording or photography is allowed from the witness table. Further, meeting Excuse me. Further, members of the public may not present audio or video recordings as testimony, but may submit transcripts of such recordings to the sergeant at arms for inclusion in the hearing records. I will now open up today's first public hearing on LUs 124 related to the Wings and Seafood Sidewall Cafe application in Council Member Holden's district. The application seeks to operate a sidewall cafe with approximately five tables and seven seats at an existing establishment in Ridgewood, Queens. For anyone wishing to testify on these items remotely, if you have not already done so, you must register online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And once again, for anyone with us in person, please see one of the sergeants to prepare and submit a speaker's card if you prefer to submit written testimony, you can always do that by emailing it to us at landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. I uh, would like to give the floor to Council Member Holden if he has any remarks. Uh, 
Yes, um, good morning, Chair Riley and members of the subcommittee on zoning and franchises. I'm here today to address the land use call-up application for Wings and Seafood, that's LU-124, located 785 Fairview Avenue in Ridgewood, Queens, within my district. My office has received numerous complaints from constituents about the ineffective use of the, this establishment's already set outdoor dining space. This, uh, their application for a sidewalk cafe seems excessive given the current circumstances. This estab establishment is located near a busy subway station, a school, a library, an after-school program, and a park, all of which contribute to the heavy foot traffic uh, in the area. Here are some of uh, my concerns and uh, my constituents' concerns. The current outdoor dining setup is rarely in use and is often used as storage. This wastes valuable space and takes up much needed parking in Ridgewood, a neighborhood already notorious for its parking challenges. Now, I have, I have uh, cars parked at hydrants constantly in that area, in crosswalks, even on the sidewalk. On several occasions, the outdoor dining structures have been used for decorative purposes rather than their intended use, further highlighting uh, they're really underutilized. Um, even a, um, a Google Maps shows in 2022 shows an inflatable dragon set up in the street. So this is, uh, this is what I'm talking about. Th th this particular sidewalk uh, uh, is heavily used being right at the entrance or exit of the Forest Avenue M train station and just a block away from a park and IS-93 um, uh, school. In addition, uh, in addition, the addition of a sidewalk cafe would only exacerbate the congestion in the busy area. It is also worth noting that before their sidewalk cafe application was even approved, Wings and Seafood had already constructed the structure um, that, uh, that they're providing. They're providing the, a photograph, and they, they erected a, a structure attached to the building illegally to house the sidewalk cafe. Um, they were issued a, a perm, uh, summons on July 16th for an unauthorized build-out. And here's the summons. The, app the applicant essentially created this extension of the building. Several flags came up that caused the call up in the first place. Uh, that caused this call up in the first place, and that's why we need we needed this to be heard by in the subcommittee. I look forward to hearing why the applicant feels the sidewalk cafe is needed. I would also like to see a decision from the applicant on whether they will choose to proceed with either the sidewalk cafe or the uh, outdoor dining setup, but not both. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, the chair, and I do have photographs uh, if the committee would like to see uh, the current structure. Thank you. I'll pass that around for the members. Thank you, Councilmember Holden. I would now like to call the applicant panel for this item, which consists of Kichun Wang, who will also be accompanied by a translator who is going to translate her it in Mandarin for her. Council, please administer the affirmation. Hello. Could you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? You could press the button on the mic. Yes. Hello. Do you affirm ah. to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and in your answers to all council member questions? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. For the view in public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now the applicant team may begin. I'll just ask that you please reinstate your name and organization before you begin. You may begin. Uh, 请说出你的名字, 你餐厅的名字. 
我叫 K 春万，餐厅是呃威廉师傅。My name is Ken Cheng Wang. I am the owner of the restaurant named Wings and Seafood. Does he want to make any statement regarding this application? Sure. You 递交的这个申请表，你今天有没有什么想要说的话，跟他们说？哦，我想说的。我需要这个外面这个，呃，这个财务，嗯、呃，这个这个咖啡，还有呢？呃，因为如果没有这个，这外面这个可以谈吃的，我的餐馆已经关门了。因为疫情的时候已经没有生意了，因为有了这这些桌子以后，生意餐馆才可以维持下去。嗯哼，这就讲完了是吧、嗯、？OK。Um, I would like to express uh, my demanding. I do need uh, this side work for run, continue to running my uh, restaurant business because without uh, this side work space, my restaurant uh, would have been closed. As you know, in during the pandemic, the business was very hard to continue. I had less client walked into my restaurant, so I highly uh, petition and、uh, let me allow me to have this、uh, sidewalk ca cafe. This is the key. Elements I can continue my business. I can continue survive. How long has、uh, he operated this sidewalk cafe? Your this sidewalk cafe, you 共运营了多长时间呢？我这个跟外面马路边这个叫怎么讲？讲 sidewalk 这个 sidewalk 这个一一一起的。以前的时候是里面有摆桌子啊，后边多长时间？多长时间呢、啊？差不多疫情以后，差不多有，就是说有摆桌子的。Okay. 疫情之后 ，It's been around the three years since the pandemic. And how long has he been operating his business in the area? You 在这个地方做生意一共多长时间？啊，差不多五年了，五年多了，五年吧。I have been running this business for about five years. Um, I have no more questions for this applicant panel.、Uh, Councilmember Holden, do you have any questions?、Um, yes. How, how many tables are inside、uh, the cafe? You indoor restaurant, right? In the restaurant, yes. Okay, inside. thank you. Inside. Yes, yes. Your 的那个室内的哈，你一共有几张桌子？不要算外面的，室内。室内的呃，差不多七张桌子，差不多。There are seven tables inside.、Uh, and、uh, does the applicant plan to use both the street?、Uh, and he needs both the street and the sidewalk cafe. So he actually, he's got two outdoor dining spaces. Does he intend to keep the?、Um, I know he's applying for a sidewalk cafe. Does he intend to keep the street、uh, dining area, which is a large structure? Sure, thank you. He is now asking you, Mr. Chairman, you have two tables in the outside and two in the street, that is two. Do you want to keep two or how do you plan? Your plan is outside. I have two tables. I hope two tables will be kept. This is what you want? Yes, I have applied both outdoor spaces. I would hope to keep both. And how many extra tables do you, would this give you then? The the outdoor space in the street, the constituents are saying it's not being used, or it hasn't been used、uh, during the past few months.、Um, so why why should we approve an application for additional dining, not only in the street but the sidewalk cafe?、Mm -hmm. 他现在问你哈，你递交了这个申请表，但是好像发现你没怎么使用，所以他就是说，为什么他们要允许你室外这两个继续营业呢？议员讲。哦，有有在使用啊，因为呃天气冷的时候就没有冷，然后现在呢，因为天气热了以后，我们有点旧了，然后听政府说我们
又可以延续下去，付了钱了，那我们再进去，就进去呃，进去重新再油漆啊，这些再重新装修一下。所以说，最近比较少人做，再再有的再重新装修一下，因为太旧了。我听政府说有这个可以，可以再延续久。是在四年，所以说我们就要把它重新弄漂亮一下，让社区更漂亮。很得到很多的客人，把过路的这些、过路的这些、走路的这些邻居，很多人给我们支持，给我们赞美，这是真的。啊、uh, ，in terms of the vacancy actually due to the、uh, winter weather just passed, so uh, additionally, uh, we are doing some renovation for the outside space and the tables. So since I have heard of the news from the city, uh, we might be allowed to extension for four months uh, functioning. So I'm continue my, my plan is after the renovation, I'm going to resume the usage of the outdoors for the business purpose. Furthermore, I have received a lot of positive feedbacks for um, agree with for like uh, the support for the outdoor space usage from my neighbor, my clients, and uh, the people passing my restaurant. Um, do you understand the problems with the uh, parking in the area, right? Do you see that parking? Uh, is there are very few spots in that area. It's near the Greater Ridgewood Youth Council. There's a, it's a very busy area, not only schools and parks, but you're taking up uh, space in the street. Now you want to take up space in the sidewalk, on the sidewalk. So my, my question is that you, you received the summons from the Department of Buildings. You added on to the building illegally, building a shed for the sidewalk cafe without checking with the billing department or without even going through the proper procedure. You got a violation. Um, what do you ten intend to do with that structure since it is illegal that's Hi. attached to the building? Thank you. 他说：“你要知道，你的那个位置哈，是属于一些那个停车 parking 啊那些地方哈，是一个非常忙碌的这个区域。你周边还有学校啊，还有那些地铁站什么之类的哈。你现在占据了 sidewalk 跟那个 street 两个这个空间。然后你最近有收到那个楼宇局发给你的那个传票啊？那个传票显示的就是说，你那非法的没有按照那个规定，你有建造那个顶棚啊，你的那个 sidewalk 上。”上面哈，那现在他问你关于说政府已经提出你是违章这些建筑，你接下来有什么打算？他的问题是，你室外的那些建筑，我们是按这个政府的要求，所有的要求，他政府怎么讲我们就怎么做，政府允许我们说可以再做试点，所以说我们。我们只是说，我们才去重新再弄一下、装修一下。他所有的规矩都按政府的要求，经过他批准以后，我们才做的。然后他说，这个外面的路很忙，我们这条路并不忙，很忙的在前面那一条路 ，First First Avenue 那边比较忙。嗯。我们这并不是很忙。OK。学校学校那边的小孩子经都是去那边，大部分都是前面那一条路，我们这边并不是很忙。那关于这个停车位的问题的话，因为这是政府批准的，我们就可以做，对吧？反正你搭在外面，都是要要专用的、专用的停车位，这是我理解的。但是这政府批准我们做的，我们从头到尾都是按政府的规矩来做的。你们要求我怎么做，我就怎么做，我们没有说按自己的心愿来做的。Uh, in the beginning, after getting approved from the city's guideline, I had uh, built up the street cafe and the constructions. Everything has been done according to the approval and the guidelines from the city, but not uh, um, out of my own wills. 
So um, I just do follow whatever the instructions given to me regarding the structures building. Uh, in terms of uh, you mentioned uh, this is, is a very busy area, I would like to point out the busy area core area is by the first avenue, but not specifically my street. The street I am on is less busy area. So no matter what, if I um, get an approval from the city, I may be allowed to extend the, the functioning use for another four years, which might uh, have some like a conflict conflict with taking up the parking lot, which is like a, a conf conflict I admit. Right, but you're you're taking up valuable parking, and the structure that you have in the street, I'm being told, is not used in, in 2022. This is September of 2022. Um, I'll show the, the committee also. There is an inflatable structure taking up where, the, where parking could be or where dining could be. You, you elected not to use it for dining. You, just, you have this inflatable. Now, what, what's the purpose of this? Uh, if you're not, you don't need it for dining, apparently. It doesn't look like it's being used. So what was the purpose of this? Shenai 然后呢我们就做得非常的漂亮 Outside, it's actually a decor for uh, soliciting the business. In the beginning, when we was approved to set up the outdoor uh, side the cafe business, uh, later on, with the business went up well, um, I actually uh, took it down. So uh, this doesn't have any like a endangered area well again it's illegal uh so adding to your building without a permit uh with the building department is illegal also but you're you say you need dining space you need tables and yet you don't use it in the street so that's why this application is suspect and i would recommend that it be uh, turned down uh, the sidewalk cafe it's either the sidewalk cafe or not and, or, at least in my view, or the street dining. It can't, I, for the neighborhood, it, and the neighborhood doesn't want uh, both. And that's what my constituents are telling me. It's unnecessary. And also, there's, if you're going to abuse the system, then, there, again, why should we honor the application? And it, and it shows in the past you have, uh, he has abused, the applicant has abused the system. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Holden. Councilmember Shulman? Good morning. Um, yeah. Tagan 
个是他跟你讲的，所以他们就是说，对于你的这个申请啊，他们肯定不通过，你两个都想要。等一下，等一下，等我讲完他的。现在不是你回答，然后你已经回答完下一个议员了，好吗 ？OK，Yeah，I、okay. okay. have finished translation. Right. Thank you, Councilmember Shulman. Yes. Um. So, <clears throat> I know that I believe that he said you said that、um, you follow the city guidelines, but there are new there are new guidelines now that go into effect as of August third. Right? Am I? Okay. Uh, and so, under the new guidelines, the street cafe has to be built a certain way. There are guidelines on how, and it can't be in the street from November to April.、Mm -hmm. So it has to be taken out of the street, and then it doesn't get put back until April. I just want to make sure that that's understood. Okay. Now, now this member has told you clearly. You heard clearly. You said before that you have the city guidelines. But now I'm telling you about the new guidelines. You have the new guidelines. You have the new guidelines. 就是新的这个呃政策又出台了，所以你就要明白，从这个八月三号啊 ，August third 哈，八月三号就有新的，你要规定这个。然后他现在跟你讲，你关于你那个 street cafe 啊，就是市政府新规定，你就是从十一月到四月的时候，你不能摆，要撤掉。所以只是给你部分的，他跟你讲的这些规则，关于这个新的哈，最新的，你现在听得明白吗？请你回答。我听明白了，因为我已经把这个申请表递上去了，那边政府部门说同意了，我已经表格递上去给他了， okay. 图都图都画上去给他了， okay. 他们都觉得没有问题了，现在呀，他们已经觉得没问题，他有问题一直叫我们改呀，我们改到他没有问题，现在呀。OK OK Yes understood. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, you have told me, but I want to let you know I have submitted my new application to the city. Uh, along with the、uh, blueprint, and uh, uh, you those that have been approved? He is still not approved. But he is still telling us to change it. He is saying that he has no objection. Yes, understood. Okay. Currently, regarding the new application, along with the blueprint, we are in the midst of communication, communicating with the、uh, city department, try to get the final result. Okay. Just so you're aware, every street、um, entity has to have. It's all going to be the same. They're all going to have the same design, and they all have to、uh, comply with that design. If they don't, the city will take it out. The city will remove it. Okay. So that's so. So just make sure that that's understood. You can send in all the blueprints you want. The city、mm -hmm. has its own blueprint.、Mm -hmm. Am I correct in that, Bob? Okay. 那现在这个议员又跟你讲，你听清楚了，我刚翻译完你讲的哈，他是说你所有的要在街边摆这样的，就是要摆在外面的哈，这个 street 的这些哈，你做这个，整个 city 是统一的，统一的这种图设计，就是大家都是一样的规定，你要遵照这个规定，明白这个意思吗？接下来的，我知道，我一定按政府。怎么要求？市政府怎么要求我怎么做 ？Yes, I、uh, understand. So I will、uh, comply with all the regulations and the guideline. 他已经那个外面的塞翁那个已经政府都批准了，他已经都批准了，他说已经没有问题了。Okay, actually, I have been approved by the city regarding the side work. That's a previous one. They're not approving anything. August third, people have to submit. So whatever was done previously is no longer in effect. You 讲的那些批准是旧的，现在跟你讲新的，就是他提醒你。我一定按八月三号。我一定按政府的要求，我一定会按政府的要求怎么做。我不管花多少代价，我都要按政府规定来做。Surely, I will endeavor for following all the new guidelines. Um, do you own any other restaurants? 你有其他的餐厅吗？我现在没有了。只有这一间是吧？嗯，对。I only have this one. All right, thank you very much. 好，谢谢你的回答。Thank you, Councilman Shomer. Are there any more questions from Council members? All right, there being no questions, as applicant panel is now excused. Thank you. 好，可以了，我们可以讲完了。I just want to remind everyone that this was an application for the Sidewalk Cafe.、Uh, this applicant panel has a separate application、uh, within DOT for Street Cafe. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify regarding the special permit applications relating to the Wings and Seafood Sidewalk Cafe application 
remotely or in person? No, Chair. All right. There being no members of the public who wish to testify on LU 124 regarding the wings and seafood sidewalk application, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. I will now open the second public hearing on LUs 109 through 113 related to the Bronx Metro North rezone, excuse me, Bronx Metro North neighborhood rezoning that is being spearheaded by the administration. This proposal consists of a rezoning, a text amendment, and several amendments to the city map. On July 9th, we held a public hearing regarding the text amendment and rezoning. Today, we are holding a public hearing regarding the proposed changes to the city map to facilitate the proposed redevelopment of Morris Park and Parkchester Van Ness areas. There are five mapping actions. LU 109 will eliminate part of Unionport Road between East Tremont and Gurlane Street. LU 110 would widen Macaroni Street in Morris Park neighborhood. LU's 111 will map a new pedestrian, excuse me, pla, excuse me, pedestrian, can't speak today, plaza at 1320 Morris Park Avenue in front of the new station entrance at Morris Park. LU's 112 will extend Macaroni Street to connect to Pelham Parkway. LU's 113 will map a new street within one of the large development sites located at 1601 Bronxdale Avenue. For anyone wishing to testify on these items remotely, if you have not already done so, you must register online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And once again, for anyone with us in public, excuse me, with us in person, please see one of the sergeants to prepare and submit a speaker's card. If you prefer to submit written testimony, you can always do so by emailing it to us at land use testimony at council nyc.gov. Council, are there any members of the public who is to testify regarding a special permit application related to the Bronx Metro North mapping application? No, Chair. All right. There being no members of the public who wish to testify on LUs 109 through 113 regarding the Bronx Metro North map in action, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. I will now open to today's third public hearing on LUs 114 to 116 relating to the 500 Kent Avenue rezoning proposal in Councilmember Wrestler's District by the Brooklyn Navy Yard. The proposal consists of multiple actions to develop a commercial development that will include a waterfall. Esplanade that will be publicly accessible. For anyone wishing to testify on these items remotely, if you have not already done so, you must register online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And once again, for anyone with us in person, please see one of the sergeants to prepare and submit a speaker's card. You can also email it, up, email it to us at land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Councilmember Ressler, do you have any remarks regarding this project? Thank you so much, Chair Riley. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I really want to thank the development team. I am very pleased that they have partnered with a distinguished local nonprofit organization to pursue this project. The incorporation of community space within the proposed development is a critical aspect of this project and its ultimate success, as this means the proposed development will be a true asset to our community. Uh, and I'm really pleased that the developer, in partnership with the local nonprofit organization, has committed to not pursue a last mile facility. Um, I think that all together this is a a win-win-win for our community, and I'm really appreciative that the develop the development team has been responsive to concerns from myself and my neighbors. Um, and I just want to take a moment to especially thank uh, William Vidal uh, from Council Land Use, who was exceptionally helpful throughout this process and provided like truly expert guidance um, that I am deeply grateful for. And I don't know that we would have figured out a way to get to yes if he wasn't so smart. So thank you very much, William. Um, the development team appreciates it. Um, and I just want to thank uh, my staff, Molly Haley especially. Um, Marianne Alexander was my 
uh, previous chief of staff who worked a lot on this project. Um, I think the first time the development team approached me about it, I was not yet sworn in as a council member. Um, and so we've been going at it for a while. Uh, and I'm pleased that we were able to get here today. I would like to just ask for an expedited uh, kind of uh, brief presentation, if that's possible, from the development team. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ressler. I will now call the applicant panel for this item, which consists of Ray Levin, Nebel, Treya. Neville Gosquai. All right, Neville Gosquai and Jeff Rubin. I do not, but that's okay. So apparently. Oh, Rick Parisi's here? Yeah. Rick Parisi. Council, can you please administer the affirmation? Please raise your right hand and state your name for the record. Raymond Levin. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in uh, your testimony today in response to council member questions? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, fellas. For the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now the applicant team may begin. I'll just ask that you please reinstate your name and organization for the record. Good morning. I guess it's still morning. Um, I'm uh, Raymond Levin. I'm special counsel at Herrick Feinstein. Uh, with me is, as we said, was Nebel from uh, Marvel Designs, the architects. Uh, Rick Parisi from MFPF, the landscape architects, and Jeff Rubin from PHA, the environmental consultants. Uh, we have. Uh, That's just the intro slide, so. Oh, okay. Um, you just tell them next and all. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Next. Next. <laughs> and uh, next after that, we're going to go fast. The council member asked for fast. Um, the, uh, the co-applicants are seeking zoning actions, including a map change from M31 to M15 at 500 Kent in South Williamsburg. And you can see the, the difference from the two maps in the red area. Next, please. Um, the site is located on Wallabout Channel um, with frontage on Division and Kent Avenues and abuts the Brooklyn Navy Yard to the south. Um, the site... Um, North of the site is uh, a new residential development uh, consisting of three uh, towers, closest being 23 stories. Uh, across Kent Avenue to the east is the Roberto Clemente ball field and park, um, and to the south is the, is the Navy Yard. Both, uh, our, both the, the site that we're talking about today and the portion of the Navy Yard that it's immediately to the south of us uh, currently have open uses, so there's no buildings on them. Uh, next, please. Um, the proposed development uh, includes over 500,000 square feet of office space, uh, 20,000 square feet of retail, uh, over an acre of publicly accessible open space, uh, over 200 uh, below grade parking spaces, and 100 uh, plus bicycle parking spaces. Next, please. The project aims beyond uh, hopefully making a positive return on investment. Uh, is to redevelop the site in a manner that links uh, the new residential development to the north, the established South Williamsburg neighborhood to the east, and the Navy Yard to the south. The proposed project will contribute to the neighborhood and broader community by improving a vacant lot, currently used for school bus parking, uh, creating a public walkway on the waterfront that will ultimately connect with similar public ways both north and south, by creating additional public access points from Kent Avenue to the Wallabout Channel, providing space for both offices and retail businesses, which can offer services and employment to opportunities for local residents, and generate uh, taxes for the city, including real estate sales and payroll taxes. Um, now I'll turn it over to, uh, to our design professionals to describe the, uh, the buildings to you. Uh, uh, next slide. I'll, I'll introduce my. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, next slide. Sorry. 
um, Nebel from uh, Marvel Architects. Um, so this is an uh, illustration just showing the, uh, the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard development and the location of the uh, 500 Kent site just to the north of it, um, just south of um, the Williamsburg uh, waterfront. Uh, next slide. Um, another illustration of kind of uh, development along the waterfront with the domino development on the far left, various other residential uh, projects on the uh, uh, on the right, and then the far right is the Navy Yard and uh, Dock 92. Um, light blue is the uh, future um, Navy Yard development, and then the pink site in the center is the, uh, the location of 500 Kent, kind of acting as this uh, juncture between those kind of strings of development. Next slide. Uh, just a, a note about the design and the orientation for how the massing developed. Um, multiple street gates kind of come together um, uh, along division, uh, actually, and uh, part of the site plan uh, review and analysis was about introducing a, a third axis through the site. Um, so the site has multiple entries um, to access the, the future waterfront esplanade. Um, and uh, Introducing the diagonal axis in the image on the right um, is, you know, a homage to the uh, the one of the prior street grades that that never made it all the way through the waterfront um, uh, in the project. So next slide. Uh, this is a, a site plan of the project, uh, showing kind of the two volumes that make up the building: uh, low volume to the north, uh, taller tower to the south in the pink area. Um, also illustrating the, the various access points of the site. Um, to the south, there's a visual corridor that's designed as an upland connection, uh, the required upland connection on the north side uh, along division, um, and then the additional access point um, kind of through the center of the site. Uh, since it is a very large frontage, um, it does kind of provide multiple vantage points and access to the, the, the waterfront. Uh, next slide. Uh, the massing of the building uh, is illustrated um, in, in this diagram um, where you can see the, uh, the low volume along division, which allows kind of the view corridor all the way up from Bedford down division out to the waterfront um, to kind of be maintained by having the low volume there. Um, and then you also have the, the cut through at the center of the site providing that additional access point. Um, and then the orientation of the volume uh, adds a little bit of interest. Uh, shifting off the, the axis and aligning to the, the street grid there. Uh, next slide. Next few slides are actually just uh, various views of the project. So um, this is a view um, north on division. This is a view uh, on Kent at the south side of the height site, looking at the visual corridor, uh, uh, looking up Kent. Next slide. Uh, this is a view at uh, the center of the site at Kent, um, illustrating kind of the proposed uh, illustrative lobby entrance area. Um, move Next slide. Um, and then with this, I think um, I can uh, uh, hand it over to Rick Parisi to uh, talk to the waterfront. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Neville. Rick Parisi, MPFP, Landscape Architects. Uh, this slide right here shows uh, what both um, Ray and Neville mentioned before, which is the connectivity to um, Kent. Uh, in this particular project, we have three connection points, uh, two PAAs. One is a visual corridor, and that's at the Navy Yard section, one that goes through and under the two buildings, and then one on division. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this project is a lot of this open space is much more voluntary. Um, there is there was a concept to bring that open space, the shore public walkway, to the street and connect to the park. Uh, and I think we've, we've, you know, we have the opportunity in this project to, to bring more open space to the public than in most projects. So uh, next slide, please. Just the overall site plan, what you see here are those connections to, to Kent. And you also start to see the uh, multiple levels that step up the building. Another important point of how this project is designed, we are transitioning from Kent at elevation 16 and 18 to the shore public walkway at elevation 9.5 with ADA connections throughout. So all these spaces have ADA access through and then they have stepped plazas above that. Next. And this is a view from the water, aerial view. Next. Uh, this is a view from the shore public walkway 
looking uh, towards the north. Next. And another view from the lower level, we have not a full get down, but we have a, a transition point, ADA transition point that creates a little informal amphitheater area that goes down to around elevation six. So it gets, gets the public closer to the water, um, you know, what, which we always try to do in, in all these public spaces. Next. So this, um, Neville again. Uh, so this slide uh, is the same site plan we saw before. Um, this illustrates uh, all the access points mentioned before for pedestrians, but also illustrates the uh, parking entrance to the north uh, along Division, uh, as well as the required loading dock, which is located on Kent. Um, so that was kind of worked through um, uh, a lot with uh, both um, city planning and with uh, DOT for uh, how to kind of navigate the, the bike lane on Kent um, and the traffic uh, through and around the neighborhood. So um, the, the parking originally had two entrances, one on Kent and one on Division. Parking entrance was relocated to Division. Um, and the loading dock you'll see on the next slide. Um, uh, next slide. Uh, is designed as a head-in, head-out configuration. So um, vehicles entering the site for, for loading purposes um, are always uh, in full line of sight for anything they're crossing. There's no one backing in or out of the site um, uh, to make sure it's the, the safest crossing um, it can be. Um, uh, and um, uh, that's next slide. All right. To sum up, this is what we're uh, here today asking uh, for the council to uh, approve for the subcommittee. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, the zoning map amendment, which I mentioned, uh, from M31 to M15. Uh, a number of waivers uh, for bulk, given the uh, configuration of the uh, architectural uh, uh, design that we've come up with. Um, there's also a special permit for the parking uh, garage and a certification uh, for the waterfront public access requirements are, are met. Those are the, uh, those are the requests um, and we're here for any uh, questions anyone might have. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. I have a couple of questions to now see if uh, Councilmember Russell have any questions. You're proposing the rezoning from an existing manufacturing district to a higher density manufacturing district to facilitate commercial development. The Brooklyn Borough President recommended disapproval of this project because this is a large site in an IBZ with waterfront access adjacent to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, which makes it a prime site for maritime industrial use. Why do you believe this site is more appropriate for commercial use? Well, we, we looked at the market um, and we came up with this, the notion that the commercial, commercial office use would be, uh, would be better. Um, some of the reasons for that is, in fact, because we're located next to the Navy Yard. Uh, the Navy Yard has significant industrial space available, and it's a mission-driven organization, not-for-profit, on city land, and can offer rates for rental that are more competitive than the private sector. So those were uh, a couple of the reasons. Another reason is that um, uh, to, to use the property uh, for maritime related uses would probably prohibit the fact of having that waterfront walkway connect from the residential area to the north to the Navy Yard in the south. Now the Navy Yard immediately south of us, their master plan shows a public walkway and also no, no maritime use at that location. Obviously, the Navy Yard itself, which was used to build aircraft carriers, um, it has the infrastructure for water-related uses, um, and that's another reason why, uh, in this general area, that's the better place for them. And I guess the last thing is, is that the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, in looking at uh, at Wallabow Channel, uh, found that the in order to to accommodate um, the kinds of of maritime uh, uses that uh, that were that the Navy Yard looked at would need dredging, and that would just make it uh, uh, unfinanceable. So those are a few of the reasons why we ended up with with commercial. We also think that commercial is uh, 
creates the, the context between the residential to the north and the Navy Yard to the south and the park across the street provides the linkage and, and uses that are compatible both with the manufacturing uses to the south and the residential uses to the north. Did you consult with the Brooklyn Navy Yard on how the proposed development in public open space relates to the Navy Yard? Yes, we, I've, I met with them quite a while ago, um, and we've had conversations with them since. Their uh, open space along the, along the uh, canal meet up with ours, and, they, and in fact, we, they, if, if you re recall from the drawing, um, the uh, there's a between our site and their site is now an open space and a and public way to get to the waterfront. So yes, the answer is yes. Thank you, Councilmember Russell. Thanks so much, Chair Riley. I wonder what we would have gotten if we didn't ask for an abbreviated presentation. But appreciate you all being here today. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I got this. You know, I have these other speeches. Okay, We're, <laughs> we'll save them for next time, Ray. Um, I did. I was remiss in failing to thank and recognize Lena and Brian from the Land Use Division for their great help on this project. So thank you very much. And I also really wanted to just recognize uh, Ashley Thompson from Capolino for her great help on this as well. Um, I can't remember your married name. I'm sorry. It's okay. I apologize. Um, so just a couple very quick questions for me. Um, can you state for the record that you have zero intention of introducing last mile facility at this site? We have zero intention of introducing last mile facility at this site. And can you speak briefly to how this site addresses climate resiliency concerns, just considering its location on the Williamsburg waterfront? Um, I will turn that over. Uh, there are, in, in terms of flooding, um, the project has clearly been made at, so let me start all over. From Kent Avenue to the waterfront is a, is a, a, a tremendous slope. And we've, uh, and yeah, Neville can, can I'll okay. let someone who knows what they're talking about say something. So um, as, as uh, Rick stated um, in the landscape portion, there's a substantial grade change between Kent um, and, and the site. Um, so, um, you know, first line of mitigation is, you know, the changing grade, which has buffers and, and things of that nature. Um, uh, to mitigate uh, kind of uh, coastal flooding, um, but also any openings into the building that could result in flooding are raised above the flood elevation. Um, the only one that is, you know, potentially subject to it is the garage entrance, and that would be mitigated with uh, conventional dry proofing um, uh, measures. Um, and um, uh, anything that got in, well, it wouldn't get in, but Kent is well well above it, so there's no approach on Kent. So the only entry um, that we see is fe feasible um, uh, if there were a flooding event um, can be dressed with, with normal uh, dry proofing measures. And can you just, we've had challenges at 25 Kent, even at Domino, um, at the refinery, in the Navy Yard, in filling commercial office space in this area. Can you speak to your confidence interval for how you'll be able to kind of effectively activate this space and ensure that kind of this is a financially viable proposal, in recognizing the kind of post-pandemic marketplace? Um, sure. Um, the, the project was started before the pandemic, uh, when the commercial office market was a little different than it is today. Yeah. Um, the applicants are still confident uh, in their ability uh, to uh, succeed with an office building in South Williamsburg. Um, the office market in the and along the East River from um, Domino down to uh, Dumbo uh, has been strong and has been more resilient than uh, Manhattan and other locations in the city. Um, there are a number of new office buildings that, um, notwithstanding concerns about the market, uh, have, been, have been built or are being built. Uh, the refinery, 10 Grand Street in Domino, 29 J Street in Dumbo, uh, 18 and 31 Spencer Street, uh, and 347 Flushing are all um, office buildings um, and uh, show a confidence in this part of the city which may not be seen elsewhere. Um, the other thing that, um, that gives us confidence is the location next to the Navy Yard. There are a lot of growing businesses in the Navy Yard that are gonna be looking to expand and in, in, in surrounding neighborhood. 
Um, this area has a, a, a strong local workforce in Williamsburg and Greenpoint. Um, it has lower rents than in parts of Manhattan. Um, and there's a creative atmosphere along the Brooklyn waterfront that attracts uh, creative businesses. Um, so those things we think are important. And also locational advantages of this particular site. We're on, we're on the waterfront, which is a positive thing. We're on a bike path, which is one of the heaviest used in the city, and, and therefore the employees can come by bike rather than having to go otherwise. Um, it has open space uh, for the employees in the neighborhood people. Um, there's going to be some retail and, uh, and the new residential community that's being built surrounding them uh, provides a uh, workforce uh, that may come to these office spaces. So for all of those reasons, um, our client, uh, for whatever the, the general notion is about office space, are confident that this uh, will make sense. Plus, I think if you talk to people, this building's not going to be built for a few years. And a lot of people believe that the office market is going to come back anyway. I certainly hope so. I hope it's a great success. My final question is, how do you plan on recruiting building service workers and ensuring they receive adequate compensation? Um, I think that we're going to be working with, uh, with the unions in order to do that. Um, plus, we're working with uh, the neighborhood organization to help recruit people. So yes. OK. Any more to say on that, or is that all for today? I'm afraid I'm not the uh, lab labor <laughs> the person involved in the okay. labor. Well, I really want to thank the whole development team for working collaboratively with us through this process. I know this was not an easy project uh, to for all of us to figure out, but I think we've landed in a good place, and I'm, I'm looking forward to supporting it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ressler. Are there any more questions from council members? No. Okay. Uh, being that there are no more questions, this applicant panel is now excused. Counselor, are there any more, uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on 500 Kent Avenue rezoning proposal, remotely or in person? No, Chair. There be no other members of the public who wish to testify on LUs 114 through 116 regarding the 500 Kent Avenue rezoning proposal. The public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. I will now open today's fourth public hearing on LUs 120 and 121 related to the 712 Myrtle Avenue rezoning proposal, also in Council Member Wrestler's district, but in bed -Stuy. The proposal consists of a mixed-use residential development with approximately 41 apartments. The, re the rezoning would involve the mapping of mandatory inclusionary housing, and as a result, part of the new housing would be affordable apartments. For anyone wishing to testify on these items, if you have not already done so, you must register online on council.nyc.gov slash land use. Or if you're with us in person, you could contact or uh, connect with one of the sergeants to prepare a speaker's card. If you want to submit written testimony, you can email it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Councilmember Wesley, you have any remarks for this project? Chair, could I ask for a point of uh, privilege. Might I be able to ask a couple questions before the presentation? Yes, you may be. Terrific. So, not yet. I just have to swear them in. Thank you very much. Okay. I would now call on the applicant panel, which consists of Richard Lobel and Kevin Williams. You could leave too. Council, can you please administer the affirmation? Please raise your right hand and state your name for the record. Richard Lobel. You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in your testimony today in response to council member questions? I do. Thank you. Thank you. For the view in public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please email land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now the applicant team may begin. I'll just ask before you answer council member wrestler's questions. Uh, you just please reinstate your name or organization for the record. After you answer his questions, you may give your uh, brief presentation. Thank you. Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel, PC. Kevin Williams of GZA. Great. Uh, Richard, Kevin, good to see you again. Um, you know, we should just do a rezoning of all of Myrtle, so we don't have to do these <laughs> one by one. Um, but look, uh, it would mean that Kevin would have more, t uh, our chair would have more time on his hands, uh, uh, which would be good for the world. So uh, uh, this is a great project. It brings more housing uh, and uh, to an area where we desperately need it. Um, I think it's a smart mixed-use approach for Myrtle Avenue, um, and I'm happy to 
block by block, uh, lot by lot, continue to, to rezone this area to allow for uh, more growth and development. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the, the things that makes me saddest as a council member is that I hear from families, especially in Williamsburg, every single week that they have children who are getting married and forced to leave the neighborhood because they have no place to live. Um, this project uh, uh, by Rabbi, Rabbi Lichtenstein and Mrs. Lichtenstein will be a great asset for our community. Um, I have just two quick, three quick questions. Uh, one is, uh, we'll be pursuing option one for this project. Just wanted to make sure you're aware. Um, thank you for making us aware of that. We understand the community board's right. uh, preference and, and to the extent the council members. You've, you've worked with that. me before. Of course, Lincoln. Um, the, <laughs> some things don't change. Uh, secondly, uh, we spoke with Rabbi Lichtenstein and Mrs. Lichtenstein about the feasibility of a windowless room, either at the basement level or ground floor level, uh, being made available for a local nonprofit organization in the community, potentially Chesed, um, which does amazing work in Williamsburg. Just want to make sure that that's something that the applicant is, is supportive of and uh, on the record. Yes, that's correct. Terrific. And then um, there are tenants who currently live on these lots. Um, as needed, they will be provided an opportunity to return to the housing that's built here if they do not have alternative housing. That is correct. And I said three, but I'm going to do four because I'm on a roll. Could you just speak to any green elements of this development? Is it subject to the all-electric buildings law? Um, or do you anticipate it will be subject to that, depending, I guess, on the timeline for construction uh, and any other elements for sustainability that you'll prioritize on this project? Yeah. Uh, Kevin Williams, GZA. Council Member, good to see you. Um, yes, yeah, so it will be all-electric. Um, I think the, the build year will make it required. Um, in terms of um, sustainability elements, um, of course, we'll be restoring tree pits, and swales all along the, the frontage sidewalk area, which is wide in this area. We'll have green roof system or a, or a combined green roof solar system on the roof system, um, you know, in compliance with, with the latest requirements of local law. Um, Again, I think one of the things that we constantly recommended to the architects and developers for projects not only in Brooklyn but throughout the city is that they apply for the very generous grants for the heightened ENERGY STAR requirements uh, from NYSERDA uh, because there are tax incentives associated with those. And I, you know, I believe that the, both the architect and the developer uh, property owner have agreed to those. Well, I really want to just thank Chair Riley for the point of privilege. Thank you all for this good project and look forward to the presentation. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Council Member Ressler, Chair Riley, Council Members. Good afternoon. Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel. We're here today to discuss the 712 Myrtle Avenue rezoning. The next slide. The next slide is a summary of the rezoning uh, in terms of the requests. The first is that we will be rezoning lots 20 through 24 and a portion of lot 25. Uh, in bed along Myrtle Avenue from an existing M12 to an R70 C24 district, which would facilitate the development of a no, new nine-story, roughly 49,800 square foot, 5.57 FAR mixed-use building with roughly 41 dwelling units, including 10 permanently affordable. We are also, as is the case with all such rezonings, uh, applying for a text amendment to allow for mandatory inclusionary housing here as well. Um, and uh, we understand from the council member's statement that um, he intends to restrict this to option one. The next slide is the numbers behind the proposed development. Again, a nine-story building, roughly 49,800 square feet. Uh, there would be a base height of 95 feet, after which the project building would set back 10 feet at the eighth story. There would be 21 bike parking spaces within a bike room in the cellar, 41 units, and 10 affordable at option one. The next slide is the zoning map, which demonstrates from an overall view uh, the appropriateness of the rezoning in this area. You can see just generally from this large view that R70 exists already uh, for blocks and blocks to the east of this property. This was property and, and blocks that were rezoned in the 2012 North Bedford-Stuyvesant rezoning. Uh, and so the context here was set at that time. As we look through the next two slides, we'll see why uh, it's appropriate for this specific site. The next slide is the tax map which shows with specificity both the area in red, the development site, uh, as well as the uh, nature of the zoning change, this entire frontage between Spencer and Wallabout, sorry, Walworth, would be rezoned to R70 with a C24 overlay. The next slide is the area map, which I think really well illustrates why this rezoning is so imp uh, important and so uh, appropriate. One can see across the street two R70 districts 
both to the northeast and to the east-northeast. Uh, those were rezoned in 2017 pursuant to the 723 to 733 Myrtle Avenue rezoning. Uh, at that time, uh, the community board uh, realized that they wanted to spur development on this frontage. Myrtle Avenue here, a wide street at 75 feet with excellent transportation options in the area, was one which was well suited for the R7 DC24. Uh, more recently, in 2023, this Land, uh, this zoning subcommittee approved across the street, although not noted on the map, an R70 C24 rezoning for 703 Myrtle Avenue, again mirroring the same district. And now we are merely asking for that same district on the southern portion of that same uh, block frontage. Uh, important to note, in addition to Myrtle Avenue being a wide street, having excellent transit access, we also note that the R7D, when paired with the C24, is, is one of the only districts in the city which would mandate non-residential ground floor uses. This is something which was important both to the developer as well as the community board to allow for a lively thoroughfare along Myrtle Avenue and for continuous commercial use. Uh, the next slide is the zoning change map again showing the new R70 C24 as proposed. And the next several slides show the uh, plans and materials for the building. All, all of these are illustrative. If you want to forward to the last page in the presentation, we come to the proposed unit count. Uh, and uh, the applicant has worked with community stakeholders in order to allow for uh, units that are of larger sizes. We're particularly proud of that with regards to this application of 41 units in the building. More than half of those are going to be two, three, and four and four bedroom units, and uh, more than a third of those are gonna be three and four bedroom units. So we're gonna get some wonderfully nice, large family size units here, as well as importantly, because of mandatory inclusionary housing, the units that are allocated to affordable units will be in the same proportion in the building as the units generally, meaning that there will be affordable families who, uh, affordable units, which will be given to families who will be in those two, three, and four bedroom units. We're happy to, to bring that affordability uh, to units of this size. and with that the applicant team is happy to answer any questions um that was the question i actually had so i'm not going to ask that um with that being said councilman do you have any questions no all right this applicant team is now excused thank you uh, council are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this application no chair there's no members uh, of the members members of the public who have signed up online or in person to testify okay there being no other members of the public who is to testify on LUs 120 and 121 regarding the 720 Myrtle Avenue rezoning proposal. The public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. I'm going to move things around a little bit because I know Council Member Narcisse has to go. Um, so I will now open up today's hearing on LUs 117 and 118 uh, relating to the 3033 Avenue V rezoning proposal in Council Member Narcisse District in Sheeps Bay, Brooklyn. The proposal consists of mixed-use residential development project with approximately 109 apartments. For anyone wishing to testify on these items remotely, if you have not already done so, you may do that now by registering online at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And with anyone with us in person, you may see one of the sergeants prepare a speaker's card. If you want to submit written testimony, you can email it to testimony at council.nyc.gov. Councilmember Narcisse, do you have any remarks? Thank you. Not good. I appreciate it. I was going to ask the same favor. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, Chair. Uh, amazing work here um, for 33, I mean 3033. Um, one thing I have to report to you that um, Community Board 15, um, except I think we only had two no's. And for me, I've been going to the process in the climate where we are right now looking for um, home for folks in New York City. I am very pleased with this project. And I want to say thank you to Donna and Tim from Len News. Of course, my chief of staff going back and forth, Saeed Joseph, to make sure this project um, is where it is today. My deputy chief of staff, Frank Shea. And Teresa, of course, with all the team from Community Board um, 15. I want to say thank you to all of them. And I don't have much to say about this project. That's why we're here. It's a great project. And I'm looking forward for that. That. But one of the things that I want to say is a few questions that I have, and I know I'm going to get the answer. Um, it's about 
is there are currently um, um council member let me just swear them in before you ask oh yeah, yeah right? that's true okay <laughs> so hold on one second i'll be the only we didn't do that we did it backwards error. sorry oh no it's all right um i would now just like to call the applicant panel neil weiss weisberg weisbard weisbard thank you uh council can you please administer the affirmation Yes, Chair. Could you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Neil Weisbard. You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in, resp in your testimony today in response to council member questions? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. For the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Uh, I will just ask you, Neil, before you answer the council member's questions, uh, just reinstate your name and organization for the record. Uh, once she's finished with the questions, you may proceed with the presentation. Neil Weisbard, Seifarth Shaw, on behalf of Ford Coil Properties, owner of 3033 Avenue V, Brooklyn. Good go ahead, council member. So I want to say thank you to you again. It's been a long process, and um, they are currently eight active. You know, as a former business person, I'm always um, caring about the the business because um, they've been there for so long. Um, we are currently have eight active retail tenants on the site. How many retail spaces will be provided as part of this proposal? And what will be the square footage for each? That's one. Second, please share your commitment to providing the opportunity for existing retail tenants to reoccupy the site including plans for keeping commercial rents the same adjusted for inflation of course and the third one please state for the record your commitment to engage the with nostrand houses tenants to determine what kind of retail they want to see as part of this project because they're next to this development thank you so Thanks for your question. I'll start with Nostrand Houses Tenants Association. Your office has provided me with contact information, and I've sent an email to try to meet with them. Just have not arranged that yet. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we've submitted a letter to your office as well, indicating that, that we will meet with them. The commercial spaces, we're not sure how many they will be, but I can. the commitment of ownership is to provide the existing tenants with priority for those spaces. So if all eight tenants want to occupy the building, there will be eight spaces for them, and they will be at current rents or as adjusted for inflation, as you stated. And as you know, and just for Chair Riley, the ownership has signed a commitment letter evidencing that as well and provided that to your office. Um, the other concern that I have, it's um, for the Nostrand houses. Um, if we're going to have that for them to have an opportunity as well for the retail space. Yes. Because they're right across. And they, we have eight active tenants, right? So how many at least minimum the space that you're going to have right now? So the, the delineation of spaces hasn't been defined yet. There's 14,000 the square feet of commercial space. And the, we'll accommodate the existing tenants if they want to return. And if Nostrand Houses tells us we have this great idea for community space, then that will be taken into account as well. And one of the spaces would be dedicated to them. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And you uh, let's coming. do it. Thanks. OK, thanks for having me. Uh, next slide, please. So the summary of the land use actions are, this is an amendment to zoning map 29A which underlines lot 36 on tax block 7367 from an R4 residence district to an R7D district within a C2-4 commercial district. This will also include the area as part of a mandatory inclusionary housing area. Next slide, please. The site is located on the north side of Avenue V. It comprises the entire southern portion of the lot. It is a 20,000 square foot lot they, it has frontages on three streets, two of them being wide. That is Coyle and Avenue V. Next slide, please. The site is currently improved with a one-story building that has 11 commercial establishments. And as Councilmember Narcisse mentioned, eight of them are currently occupied. Next slide. 
This is a proposal of the rezoning map showing the area in red that will be, if approved, rezoned to an R7D and C2-4 commercial overlay. Next slide, please. This is an aerial photograph of the site. To the east are numerous six and seven story Nostrand House building, NYCHA buildings. Next slide, please. The proposal is a nine story building, which will contain 97,000 square feet of residential floor area, 14,000 square feet of commercial, 109 apartments, 27 of which will be affordable, and the site will contain 109 attended parking spaces on two subcellar levels, and that is at the request of Community Board 15, who wanted a parking space for each dwelling unit. Next slide, please. The ninth floor will be set back and will be barely visible from the street. And it's also important to note that within 25 feet of the residence on Ford Street, the height of the building may not exceed 55 feet. Next slide. And these are just some renderings of the proposed building. Next slide. And next slide, please. The area is well served by bus service with service to nearby subway stations as well. There's a stop just south of the site. Next slide, please. This area is in an area of minimal flood hazard and there is a small portion, very small portion that's located within the 0.2% floodplain. There are no records of underground streams in the area and the project architect, if there is any water issues during construction has over 40 years of experience in this area, constructing flood proof buildings. Next slide. Flood proofing measures include dry, dry flood proofing areas below grade, utilizing anchoring the foundations to the piles to prevent flotation, utilizing flood damaged resilient materials and utilizing flood mitigation measures such as steel gate system. And next slide. The building will also contain numerous sustainable elements, including active solar power, a green roof, rainwater harvesting, and environmentally friendly materials. I have some floor plans, but that's the end of my presentation and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, the questions I had uh, actually uh, were related to the concerns Community Board 15 had. Uh, I know you stated that it was less than 0.2 percentage of floods within the area, but they did have uh, concerns that this was a flooding area. I'm pretty sure residents live over there. They're seeing certain things happening. Um, so I did see that you had a resiliency plan. So I would just say if you can reiterate it to the community board what this plan is so they're fully aware and also related to the uh, NYCHA development that's uh, located by Compre Source, some members of the community board live in that development as well. Um, the next question I did have, and I, I heard you talk to Councilmember Narcisse about, uh, you're waiting for uh, to organize a conversation with the NYCHA development. Uh, did you have any ideas of how that relationship uh, would be? What, what kind of partnerships would you have them partner um, within this new development? Is it gonna be community space there? Are they gonna have any uh, input on the businesses that go there? Like what, what does this relationship look like? So the existing tenants have priority, so th that's up front. And we won't know till we meet with them, but we do want to hear what their needs are, and we've made that commitment to Council Member Narcisse. So once we do have that meeting, if I have it before the full council vote, I'll provide you with that information. But we look forward to working with them. Thank you. And uh, last question. The rendering showed beautiful building. Uh, the existing uh, conditions, I think there's like 11 businesses there. Yes. I was counting. Do you have enough space for 11 commercial businesses or not all 11 will come back? If there needs to be, well, right now there's only, I think, I think council member said Narcisse said eight. There might be 10 tenants, but that, okay. that might have gone down since I last spoke to. They'll be given priority. If 10 tenants want to go in, we'll make space for 10 tenants. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, there being no more questions, you're excused. Thank you for testifying thank here you. today. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on uh, 30... 3033 Avenue V rezoning proposal? No, Chair. Neither online nor in person. Okay. There being no members of the public who is to testify on LUs 117 and 118, we're going to 3033 Avenue V rezoning proposal. The public hearing is not closed and the item is laid over. I will now open 
the next hearing on LU's 119 relating to the 197 Berry Street rezoning proposal in Councilmember Gutierrez District in the Williamsburg neighborhood of Brooklyn. The proposal consists of converting the sub-cellar portion of an existing parking garage into a self-storage facility. For anyone wishing to testify on these items remotely, if you have not already done so, you must register online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And anyone with us in person, please see one of the sergeants to prepare a speaker's card. If you want to submit a writ written testimony, you may email it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. I will now call on the applicant panel for this item, which consists of Adam Taban and Abraham Bannon. 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 All right. Council, can you please administer the affirmation? Sure. Please raise your hand. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Adam Taubman. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in, re in your testimony today and in response to uh, council I member do. questions? Yes. I do. Thank you. Thank you for the viewing public. If you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. The applicant team may begin. Just please reinstate your name or organization for the record. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon. I am Adam Taubman of Kramer Levin, land use counsel to the applicant. I'm joined by Avi Benin, principal of the applicant. We're here today seeking a rezoning to reduce the accessory parking requirement applicable to an existing building located at 197 Berry Street. Next slide, please. This is an aerial view of the development site or the project area. It occupies the southern portion of the block bounded by Berry Street, North 3rd Street, uh, Bedford Avenue, and North 4th Street. Next slide, please. This is the area map from our application. The development site is outlined in red. The site today is located in a special mixed-use district and in an underlying M12 and R6B district. The applicable regulations allow a wide variety of uses, residential, community facility, commercial, and manufacturing with a maximum FAR of two. And germane to this application, the accessory parking requirement as of today is one space for every two dwelling units in the case of residential uses and one space for every 300 square feet of floor area in the case of retail. Next slide. The property is also well situated among a number of public transportation options, including the L train, which runs about three blocks to the north, multiple bus lines, and the New York City Ferry. Next slide, please. This is a photo of the existing building. We're looking at it from the corner of Berry Street and North 3rd Street. It's a three to five story mixed use building with three cellar levels, and it was constructed in 2010. The existing uses include 84 dwelling units, three retail establishments, a health club located below grade, and the accessory parking garage, which is the subject of this application. That garage is located on the sub-cellar level and contains 142 required accessory parking spaces. 100 of those spaces are accessory to the commercial uses in the building, and the remaining 42 are accessory to the residential uses in the building. Another thing that you can see from this image is that Berry Street is part of DOT's permanent open streets program. So vehicles are restricted to local access and deliveries, which generally lowers vehicular traffic on this street. And some number of months ago, DOT implemented two-way bicycle traffic along Berry Street and reversed the direction of vehicular traffic along certain stretches of Berry Street, which is expected to further reduce vehicular traffic. It's a little bit difficult to see uh, from this distance, but along Berry Street is the entrance to the parking garage that I mentioned a moment ago, tucked behind that tree. If you can go to the next slide, please, we'll see some close-up images of that entrance. The parking garage is accessed from Berry Street, as I said, and located primarily below grade on the second sub-cellar level. It is an attended garage. Cars are dropped off with an attendant in an approximately 80 by 26 foot entrance area shown here. The rear of the entry area contains two car elevators that attendants use to bring cars down to and up from the sub-cellar parking level. The garage contains a total of 28,000 gross square feet, 2,000 of which comprise this entrance area, and the remaining 26,000 of which are located on the below-grade parking level. Next slide, please. 
These are images of the below grade parking area. You can see the two car elevator doors in the upper left image. Uh, really the story that these images tell us that the car garage is severely underutilized today. When we started this process a couple years ago, on average only approximately 80 of the 142 parking spaces were utilized at any given time. That number has gone down as we've worked our way through this application process. And it's actually an inflated number in that the garage charges rates that are well below market rates in the surrounding area. Uh, those below market rates inflate utilization of the parking garage and even with those lower rates and the higher utilization, the garage still operates at a loss. So we've identified a few reasons for this. First, the zoning regulations that are in effect today do not reflect the observation that the city has recently made in other contexts, which is that development sites in transit rich areas do not require as much parking as other areas. But there are also a few factors specific to this location. Chief among those is that residents in the building have told Avi on a number of occasions that they don't like to use the garage because the operation of those car elevators results in significant delays in retrieving cars. And further, we believe that the implementation of the open streets program will only further reduce demand for the parking garage. Next slide, please. So this shows the proposed rezoning. The southern half of the block would be rezoned from the existing M12 and R6B pair district to an M14 R6B district. A very small portion of the development site would remain outside the rezoned area, but under the split lot regulations of the zoning resolution, the new zoning would apply to the entire site. Next slide, please. The only effect of the proposed rezoning would be to eliminate the accessory parking requirement for the commercial uses in the building. The use regulations, bulk regulations, and loading regulations would remain unchanged. By reducing or, or rather eliminating the accessory parking requirement for commercial uses, the total parking requirement for this building would go from 142 spaces down to 42 spaces. Next slide, please. As part of the application, our environmental and traffic engineering consultant, Philip Abib and Associates, conducted a study of parking supply within the vicinity of the property. They found a surplus of both off-street parking spaces and on-street parking spaces, and concluded more generally that a surplus would remain with the proposed parking reduction. To take you through that study in some greater detail, these are maps showing the off-street and on-street parking locations within a quarter mile radius of the property. There are 10 existing parking garages within that quarter mile radius containing a total of about 1,500 parking spaces and the curbside or on-street parking accounts for an additional 1,500 parking spaces. Next slide, please. So between these two sources of parking, we found that utilization rates generally range from 75% to 96% over the weekday, midday, and overnight periods and that equates to an average of about 450 available parking spaces within the quarter mile radius outside of this site. Next slide, please. So those numbers by themselves indicate that there is an adequate surplus of parking, but the most, most rigorous way to do this analysis is to account for projected increases in demand resulting from population growth and surrounding development in the area. And even when taking into account those factors and their proposed reduction of parking, again, we found that there would be adequate surplus in the surrounding area. Next slide, please. So the rezoning would allow an approximately 18,000 square foot portion of the below grade parking area to be converted to a self-storage facility. The self-storage facility would be designated or rather designed and operated for short-term use by local residents and small business businesses with small closet-like units. This is an illustrative floor plan that shows the general sizes of those units. They're intended to all be less than 50 square feet. They're all almost about four, square, uh, four feet wide, again, uh, keeping in line with that vision of closet-like storage space for local residents and small businesses. From what we've heard from residents and businesses in the building and in the area, there is a, a very real need for a facility of this type. Next slide, please. This is another illustrative floor plan of the at grade entrance area, which would be repurposed to serve both the existing parking garage to remain reduced in size. That's shown in yellow, and um, that wouldn't be operated with one car elevator. The area shown in purple would be used for the proposed uh, storage facility 
with a dedicated elevator that instead of being used for vehicles would be used for customer access. Next slide, please. So we are pleased to report that this application has the support of residents in the building, including the condo board, uh, the health club in the building, and of course the community board, the borough president, and the city planning commission. And with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, I believe you answered them with your presentation, but I just want to ask them for the record. Uh, what is the current parking utilization rate, and how would this change impact existing residents? Are you asking about the utilization rate in this garage? Yes. So the, the conservative number we've been using for this application is 80 spaces out of 142. Um, very quick math, that's around 60%. Okay. Um, that number is actually lower today, and interestingly, among residents who have the most convenient access to the building, as of today, there are only three or four parking spaces that are rented on a monthly basis. Okay. And how much are the parking spaces? Do you know? I'm going to ask Avi to answer that question. Um, right now, we have averaging less than $200, like 195 but uh, a lot of people are going out and coming back, so they shopping around and then we try to lower the rate and bring some people back but um, yeah, it's just kind of like a game in between the other garages uh, we have to keep it lower um, even from the garage like two blocks away uh, one of the other thing is um, dailies that some other garages supplement their income with we don't have those mainly because the street is closed and nobody's getting out moving the gate moving it back and also, if they do that, there is a, <coughs> um, a Whole Foods garage that is free during the day. So if you really want to park, you just park there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there being no more questions, you guys are excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on 197 Berry Street? No, Chair. There is no one signed up online or in person to testify. There be no members of the public who wish to testify on LUs 119 regarding the 197 Berry Street rezoning proposal. The public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. I will now open today's hearing on LUs 122 and 123 related to the Prince Point application in Minority Leader Borelli's district along the southeast shore of Staten Island. This is a residential development project that has long been in the making. The application seeks a tax amendment extending the vesting provisions for the project. Applicants also seeks an amended layout for this housing subdivision, which will require the mapping of new streets. For anyone wishing to testify on these items remotely, if you have not already done so, you must register online, and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And once again, for anyone with us in person, please see one of the sergeants to prepare and submit a speaker's card. If you would like to prepare and submit a written testimony, you can always do so by emailing it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. I will now call on the applicant team panel, which consists of Robert White, Robert Huberman, Philip Rampula, and Ellen Hay. Council, can you please administer the affirmation? Can you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in your testimony today in response to council member questions? Thank you. Mr. Frazier, I just need you to fill out a speaker's card if you're going to be testifying. You guys did already? We have four speaker cards and five people. Yeah, so somebody four. didn't. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's all right. Thank you for the viewing test. Uh, excuse me for the viewing public. If you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now the applicant team may begin. Thank you for being here today. Just please reinstate your name and organization for the record. give a few brief words, introducing our team, and then Phil Rampula will make the presentation. Um, I'd like to introduce Rob Huberman from Herrick, 
Phil Rampula from Rampula Associate Architects, um, Robert White from AKRF, and Greg Fleischer from Capital Environmental Consultants. This approximately 37 acre vacant site is located in Prince's Point neighborhood between Wolf's Pond Park to the east north, Lemon Creek Park to the west south, Purdy Place to the north, and Raritan Bay to the east, south, and southwest. The developer purchased this property in 2017 from the former owner, Muss Development. Over the past three decades, the development site, in addition to multiple land use approvals and associated restrictive declarations, has also been the subject of New York State DEC review, permits, and restrictive declarations. The three primary land use goals for the past 35 years of efforts to develop this site have remained the same to provide residential use with public access areas which remain consistent with neighborhood character and the existing adjacent parks, support environmental goals in accordance with New York City Waterfront Revitalization Program and the New York State DEC standards, and in conformance with the Borough President's 2020 standards for new residential developments provide map streets and infrastructure consistent with current New York City DOT and New York City DEP standards. The application seeks approval on three actions. A city map amendment for four new 50-foot wide streets within the site, authorization under section ZR10764 to adjust the boundaries of the previously approved zoning lot subdivision, and the chairperson modification of the fifth amended restrictive deck. At this point, I'd like to turn over to Phil, and we can have the slide. Good afternoon. Next slide, please. One of the things that's very interesting about this project is um, normally these, pr these privately built streets would go to the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals for approval to build on an unmapped street. Uh, in the last mayoral administration, they got away from uh, BSA approving GCL, General City Law 36 streets, and we were instructed to map these private roads. Uh, next slide, please. Phil, can you just wait one second? I think we oh, just experienced okay. the Zoom problem. Um, so this is- the, the, wait, just, just hold on okay. one minute. going to put the hearing on pause because we're seeing technical difficulties. Just give us one second. Do you have a physical copy of a presentation by any chance? I don't. I do not. Okay, so let's just wait one more minute. Problem. Oh. Phil, I know you're very uh, accustomed or familiar with his project, so may, are you able to do this presentation without the slides, and then maybe you can send it uh, to yes, the chair not, and to us no. afterwards? Not a problem. Okay. I can do it. Is that okay, okay with you, Chair? Yes, that's fine with me, uh, if that's okay with the applicant team. That's fine with us. Okay, then you may continue. So it, it's a great site plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, there, oh, there we go. Oh, all okay. right. So that that's the existing conditions, and you can see that the site is uh, surrounded by water on two sides, and it's actually the Lower Raritan Bay. Uh, this is a 94-unit single-family detached home development. Uh, previously, 14 of those houses were built, and you can see them up on the slide because they face on a city map street. So the developer was able to buy the project, project in 2017, and those four, first 14 uh, went up. Uh, next slide, please. Why shouldn't I even ask? Just leave it. <laughs> So access, pedestrian access, okay. So to our left is Lemon Creek Park and to the right is Wolf's Pond Park. And one of the goals was to create uh, two pedestrian paths that are on each side of the tidal creek behind the houses that were built to have pedestrian access link one side of the development to the other. The, there is one access point for public access by the newly mapped street on the right side of the screen. And that comes down and has a circular uh, shape to it. And there are four cross streets that connect the loop streets. The streets will be open to the public on a 24-hour basis. Within the, the private development itself, are two public access points for scenic overviews because we're at a much higher elevation than the water. Ele the water is at elevation zero, and we're at about elevation 16. So we're about 16 feet above the water. In addition to that, to the very, very right of the road that leads into the project site is a public pedestrian access that goes along the beach. So they have access that goes around the site to the bottom and then leads into Lemon Creek Park. So be, be, besides the two, two pedestrian links to the parks, there is also public access within the development and there's public access at, at the beachfront. When we first started this, and I can't, in 2006, in two, 2006, the roads were only re required to be 30 feet wide. Next slide, please. And that was, and that had 104 dwelling units when the roads were 30 feet wide. Come on. Ah, God bless you. The next slide would be in 2019, and that's when the roads would be 34 feet wide, and we went down to 104 dwelling units. Then in 2020, the fire department changed uh, the regulations to have newly created streets from 34 feet to 38 feet wide, and we went down to 93 units, and that was in 2020. And then in 2023, the fire department changed the regulations once again. They went to 34 foot wide streets, which means a 50 foot mapping because you have 34 feet for the pavement and then you have the planting strip on both sides and the sidewalk that comes to be a 50 foot wide street. So we're asking for 50 foot wide streets to be mapped within the whole development. Uh, these will, the infrastructure within the streets will be built to DOT standards, it will not be private road standards, and the owner will deed this property to the city of New York, I believe for $1. So there's no acquisition costs at all. Um, I'd be glad to entertain any questions at this point. Okay, I'm just gonna entertain you with three questions, okay? Um, can you describe how the public access areas will operate and will they be open 24-7? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, 
Go ahead. Yes. The answer is yes. And the access is open from dawn to dusk. Okay. Um, how would they operate? Uh, can you give a little bit more detail? Well, it's a private development, so anyone living in the community will be in the residential area will be able to utilize this, the public access areas. And uh, with regard to those living in the community, they can walk over and walk through and go to the public access areas where they. C oh, I'm sorry, you can't hear me. I'm no, sorry. No, no. They can access the same as the private residents. Thank you. Uh, this is a very important question, uh, especially to the community and the minority leader. Will the development team commit not to place any gates at the entrance of the public accessible spaces? Yes. Okay. I, I'm not quite, quite sure what you mean. Not to, not to close it off so that people can We will not construct a physical barrier to yes. close off? Yes. Correct. All right. We will not. All right, thank you. All right, and is there an estimated timeline to complete this project? I, I think uh, build out's going to take probably three to four years. Three to four years? Yeah. Okay. Starting when? We can probably start late winter, early spring of next year if this gets passed. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, there being no other questions for the applicant team, you are now excused. Counselor, any members of the public who wish to testify on Prince Point application? How are you going to accept? No, Chair, there is no members of the public in person or online who wish to testify. All right. There being no members of the public who wish to testify on LUs 122 and 123 regarding the Prince Point application, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. That concludes today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use, and other council staff, and the sergeant of arms participating in today's meeting. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.